Good Monday morning already. <laughs> it's February 22, 2021. Do y'all just slather yourself with lotion in the winter? I'm telling you, my skin gets so dry. Oh, oh I have Jerry just slathered on my back and oh, my elbows and I've got my knees and my legs. Oh, it just feels so good when it's so dry. But the good news is it's going to be in the 50s today. I think one day this week it's even going to be in the 70s. Oh, ho, ho, ho. no more snow. <laughs> Actually, almost all the snow is gone. It almost all went away yesterday. Okay, now today's page I a little bit disagree with. And you'll find out why after we read it. Okay? The scripture is Mark 12, 44. They all gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all she had to live on. This is called the heart of a giver. You may know the story of the widow who gave two small coins in the temple. Two coins that were barely worth a penny. Doesn't seem like much, does it? Especially when you consider that wealthier people in the temple were giving much larger offerings. Jesus honored this woman's gift because she gave all she had. She held nothing back from God. The rich man's gift was larger, but it didn't really cost him much. He had so much money that the gift was extra money to him. Jesus looks at the heart of the giver and how much she holds back for herself compared with how much she is willing to give to others. Will you give Jesus everything? Okay, I don't agree with that. <laughs> I don't agree with that at all. There are many religions that teach their congregation that they must be poor, that they're supposed to give everything to the Lord, and they're supposed to be super poor, never have a new car, never have a new house, and never have a new anything, and if they're going to be Christians, they need to be poor because, because Jesus was poor? Excuse me. Jesus was anything but poor. You tell me if you're poor when you can send one of your disciples down to the river, the lake, the water, the whatever it was, and tell them to get a coin out of a fish's mouth to pay your taxes. Would you call that poor? I mean, how many times did they go to the river and get money out of a fish? I've never done that, have you? Jesus healed everybody of every kind of sickness, of blindness, of deafness. He walked all over the place. And he had clothing. He had a robe so valuable that they gambled for it while Jesus was dying on the cross. Jesus was not poor. I heard Kenneth Copeland preach one time that um, Jesus had a house and that it was Jesus' house where they put the man on the roof and lowered him down through the roof. Now, I don't know where Kenneth got that, but I heard him preach that. <laughs> anyway, just think about it. If you are poor and you don't have anything, how on earth are you supposed to support the gospel? How are you going to help somebody who needs money? How are you going to help somebody who's destitute and starving or is a widow and she lost her husband and all of her income? How are you going to help anybody when you've got nothing yourself? I totally, totally do not agree with this. Jesus asked us for 10%. Now, I don't know, I don't guess Jesus ever specifically said that, but in the Bible it talks about giving 10% so you can support the ministry and the people who function in the ministry. They have to get their money from somewhere. And 10% is a very small amount out of 100. I wish the government would catch on to that. <laughs> and then write again. Give your 10%, but then you have other funds that you can help people with, that you can give to charities, that you can buy food for people, or blankets for people, or coats for people, or, you know, there's so many things you can do if you have money. 
And if you give it all to the church, then you're not going to have any left. So I don't agree with that. In this case, the lady was very poor. Now, we don't know why she was very poor, but she was very poor. And all she had was a couple little coins. Well, what could she buy with that? She couldn't buy much of anything with it, I don't imagine. She was just down to nothing. So, giving it all to Jesus made it so God could give back to her. So, I imagine that those two coins ended up making that lady very well off. So, that's just my thinking on that. I think this is one of those scriptures that these preachers use to... Oh, you shouldn't have a new car, you shouldn't have a fur coat, you shouldn't have diamonds, you shouldn't have anything. Hey, <laughs> the more God can get through you, the more he will give to you. That's my belief. All right, my dear friends. <laughs> I've got to go make a video. I got a great big huge box yesterday. We almost didn't see it. But fabric, fabric whoever, it wasn't fabric mark fabrics, it was, I'll tell you when I open it, there's so many different ones, fabric wholesale direct or something. Um, they sent me two emails, one of them said, your box is out for delivery, and the next one said, your package is there, did you get it? And I'm like, no, I didn't get it, I sent Jerry out to look for it, he couldn't find it, I went out to look for it, I couldn't find it. Finally, we went out to do something with the cats. And the UPS man, or whoever brought it, had shoved it underneath the garage door. We'd leave it open a little bit for the cats to get in and out. And they had shoved it under that garage door. And I just happened to look over there, and I said, What is that box over there, Jerry? Is that cat litter or cat food or what? And he said, No. He went over there, and he said, Oh, this is some kind of fabric. <laughs> it's in a big box. And it's downstairs on the kitchen counter. So I'm going to move downstairs with my camera. And we're going to open that box, and I'll show you what's in it. So, come back later today, and you can watch me do that, if you're at all interested. Love you guys. I'll be back tomorrow.